Um, thank you, Dr. Ballard, and thank you everyone um, for coming here today and for your interest in our work. Um, so I'm going to share our results uh, looking at epigenetic aging um, and neurocognitive function in long-term survivors of Hodgkin lymphoma. We previously reported that survivors of childhood and adolescent Hodgkin lymphoma are more likely to self-report problems with their neurocognitive functioning compared to their siblings. And this included problems with focusing, paying attention, um, their organization, and their memory. Now importantly, survivors that had these impairments were more likely to be underemployed or unemployed or have worse quality of life. Now one thing that we noted in this study that was particularly interesting was that we did not see any direct effects of treatment on neurocognitive function. And these were long-term survivors on average about 20 years post-diagnosis. But what we did find was that treatment association was completely mediated by chronic health conditions, a particularly important finding in this group because they are at such a high risk of cardiopulmonary conditions. And this really prompted us to think about the risk for long-term impairments in a different way, and specifically in an early onset aging framework. So in other words, were these chronic health conditions represent a much larger accelerated aging framework that was contributing to accelerated cognitive aging. So for this particular project, our specific question was, is biologic aging associated with neurocognitive function in long-term survivors of Hodgkin lymphoma? And to do this, we used 215 survivors of childhood and adolescent Hodgkin lymphoma from the St. Jude Lifetime cohort. This is a cohort of survivors treated at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital who are at least five years from diagnosis. And as part of their participation in this cohort, they undergo a very comprehensive neuropsychological battery that assesses the domain of attention, processing speed, executive function, and memory. So our biomarker of interest here was epigenetic age based on DNA methylation profiles. And very briefly, DNA methylation is the addition of a methyl group to your DNA wherever a cytosine meets a guanine or a CPG site. And my colleague, Dr. Zhao Ming Wang, has led the efforts to do this DNA methylation profiling in St. Jude Life. And this was done using DNA extracted from PBMCs on the Illumina EPIC array. And this array allows us to look at methylation values across 850,000 CPG sites in the genome. And using those uh, methylation weights, we can calculate something called an epigenetic clock to estimate someone's epigenetic age. The results I'm going to share with you today are based on Levine's DNA M pheno age, and we chose this clock because this clock was not only trained to predict chronological age, but also multimorbidity and mortality to get at more of that physiologic aging as well. So once we calculate someone's epigenetic age, we can calculate something called epigenetic age acceleration by regressing that on chronological age. So essentially you can think of this as the difference between someone's epigenetic age and their chronological age. So if it's positive, that means they're older biologically than we would expect, and if it's negative, that means they're younger biologically than we would expect. And as Dr. Bullard mentioned, when we compared Hodgkin lymphoma survivors to community controls, they did have a statistically significantly higher epigenetic age acceleration. And on average, this difference was just about seven years of age acceleration. So now I'm gonna show you results for the association between epigenetic age acceleration and neurocognitive function for each neurocognitive domain, starting with processing speed. And these are point estimates and 95% confidence intervals for the mean difference in the age-adjusted neurocognitive z-score. So for example, those in the second tertile and third tertile of epigenetic age acceleration performed worse on a task of visuomotor processing speed compared to those in the first tertile. So in other words, higher epigenetic age acceleration was associated with worse visuomotor processing speed. When we looked at our tests for executive function, we saw that both tertiles of epigenetic age acceleration were associated with worse uh, performance on a test of verbal fluency. And lastly, when we looked at memory, both tertiles of epigenetic age acceleration were associated with worse short-term memory. And here we actually saw a very nice dose-response relationship. We also saw that the third tertile of epigenetic age acceleration was associated with worse verbal learning and long-term recall. And we do have a small sample size here, so I suspect that this dose-response relationship also exists, but we weren't powered to see it. 
And I do want to mention here that all the differences I've shown you are hovering around a half a standard deviation, which we also consider clinically meaningful. So in summary, Hodg survivors of childhood and adolescent Hodgkin lymphoma are experiencing significant epigenetic aging that's associated with worse verbal fluency, memory, and visuomotor processing speed. And our hope is that this biomarker may help us identify those survivors most at risk for early onset cognitive aging. It might actually help us gauge a preclinical response to interventions so that we can um, see efficacy sooner than some other endpoints. These data do have several limitations, the first being the European ancestry of our cohort, as well as the cross-sectional nature of the data. So we do have in the works um, an expansion of the DNA methylation profiling in St. Jude Life, and also as part of our NCI funding, we'll be um, following these survivors forward to look at changes in epigenetic age acceleration and how those might predict who's most at risk for neurocognitive decline. And just very quickly want to acknowledge all of my collaborators at St. Jude, our funding from the National Cancer Institute, and of course, all of the survivors that participated in St. Jude Life. And I look forward to taking your questions after the other presentations, but here is my email should you need any other follow-up. Thank you.